65-year-old princess took the throne. Queen Elizabeth's official celebrations for her Diamond Jubilee will be held in June. But in London, the anniversary of her accession will be marked by a 41-gun salute at London's Green Park and a 62-gun royal salute at the Tower of London. The Governor-General has sent a message of congratulations on behalf of the people of Australia and the Prime Minister, Julia Gillard, also paid tribute to Her Majesty. I would like to offer my congratulations to the Queen on her Diamond Jubilee. Today is the anniversary, the 60th anniversary of her accession to the throne. We will be saying some more about this in Parliament tomorrow and particularly the ways that Australians can get involved in celebrating the Diamond Jubilee this year. Among the hundreds of thousands who greeted the Queen last year on her visit to Australia was Professor David Flint from Australians for Constitutional Monarchy, who joins me now. Professor Flint, thank you very much for your time. The Queen's 60-year anniversary, it is a milestone that only one other British monarch has achieved, being Queen Victoria. What's unique, though, do you think about Queen Elizabeth? I think what is unique is uh, the way in which she has performed her role she, in a time of instability, and Cardinal Pell was talking about precisely this at the ecumenical service in Sydney to mark the uh, Diamond Jubilee. In a time of great instability, she stands there like a rock, and she is the symbol of service. She has dedicated her life to service, to the service of her fellow men and women throughout the Commonwealth. And this is something which is rare and very special and which sets a standard for all of us to follow. So she has been quite extraordinary. We saw with Chogham how seriously she takes that role as head of the Commonwealth. And many royal commentators have speculated that the Queen believes this is her most important role in her 60 years. Yes, she has a very high feeling and regard for the Commonwealth. I think in many ways she's right. I think the British... The British government, successive British governments, have uh, tended to play down the Commonwealth, but that is where much of the world's future growth is going to go. If you look at the comparative figures, it will be Europe which is declining, and it will be the Commonwealth which is increasing in wealth and in the number of uh, working age people. Prince Charles and the Duchess of Cornwall will come to Australia and New Zealand later this year as part of the Diamond Jubilee celebrations. What reception do you think they'll receive? And the Queen is 85 years old. How long do you believe that she will continue to reign? I think that she's going to be there for the rest of her life. She, she knows that uh, she feels that she made an oath before God that she would continue to serve. And the, for her, there's no such thing as superannuation or a golden handshake. She will continue doing that as long as she possibly can. And with the longevity of, uh, of her mother and other members of the Windsor family, it's likely that she will continue for many years, as far as we can tell. I think that uh, the Prince of Wales will be well received, and his spouse will be well received in Australia, warmly received. And uh, I think Australians will wish to mark this 60th anniversary in the same way that they were so anxious on the last visit of the Queen to honour her. We had extraordinary crowds in Brisbane and in uh, Melbourne and in Perth on the banks of the Swan River. We had crowds of uh, 120,000 or more. It reminded many of us, of those of us who are old enough to remember, you wouldn't of course, Felina, but people of my age would remember it, it would be like going back to 1954 again. Professor Flint, I do thank you as always for your time and thank you for speaking to me on Newsday and uh, no doubt we will speak to you again later in the year when Prince Charles and the Duchess of Cornwall visit. Thank you. Thank you. Let's, let's get all the